Hey everyone, Jason Weckerly here. Today I'm fishing on a southern Wisconsin river for smallmouth bass, walleyes, whatever bites. I'm fishing with Kitek Swing Impact swim baits. And I've already caught a four pound smallmouth and about a two and a half, three pounder and a couple carp. But I'm fishing this on an eighth ounce jig head and I'm gonna see if I can get anything else to bite. Let me set you guys down over here on my backpack so you guys can watch me fish. Hopefully you guys can see me well. Right now I'm fishing next to a dam and I'm fishing along a current break right down the side of the seam where the water is spilling out of the dam. I'm going to see if I can catch something. So nothing's biting yet, but I'm going to show you guys what we got going on here. We got a dam right here and I'm fishing right along this current seam right here. But it's right where the slack water meets the fast water and right along the edge of that seam fish like to hang out and ambush their prey. I'm going to try a tube jig right now, a little two and a half, three inch tube jig to see if that'll work. See if I can catch another swam out here. A tube jig is right there. I'm fishing this thing on a one fourth ounce jig head. And I like to try to rig this weedless just by pushing the hook up inside just like that just so it's barely exposed because it can crawl through the rocks and it's a lot less snaggy but I'm gonna see if this thing works now what sucks is my wife is fishing right over there and she just lost a big fish and another odd thing today, I had a carp jump out of the water and hit me. And when I fished at this dam three years ago, I had a muskie that I hooked onto jump out of the water and actually hit me when I was wading through this river. I don't know what's up with this spot, but fish like to jump out of the water and hit me. But my wife just lost one. Let's keep fishing. that folks big mama wow on the tube chain that is a big girl right there look at that at least 18 19 inches long this is the biggest smallmouth bass I've ever caught out of this river wow I'm gonna try to get some photos Alright, 
big four pound smallmouth. Catch and release. There she goes. Bye bye. Let's get another one. That's my third smallmouth today. I didn't get the first two on camera, but I'll show you guys the pictures later on in the video. If I haven't already shown you the pictures. But that's the situation I'm dealing with right now. I'm just working a current break right here. There's a bunch of rocks, a bunch of boulders. Let's see if we can get another one. I just released a, the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught out of this river here in southern Wisconsin. And I haven't seen a lot of four pound plus smallmouth in my area. I go up north to the Wisconsin North Woods a lot and I catch a lot of big 21, 20, 21, 22 inch smallmouth. The one I just released was 19 inches and fat as ever. And I caught it right here on the green pumpkin tube. Again, like I said earlier in the video, I like to push the hook. You see right here, there's the hook exposed. I just like to push it up inside the plastic so that it's weedless and snagless. It can snake through the rocks and everything else in between. Let's try to get another one. Here's my wife, Michelle, having a wonderful time, finally getting out. This is her first fishing trip in over two months, and I think she's lost a couple fish today. You lost a couple fish, right? Yeah. Right now she's working the tube jig. I'm going to get back to business now and try to catch me a smallmouth. Good luck, babe. Now we have a change of scenery here. My wife and I just decided to uh, change spots. We're gonna try down underneath this bridge right here, see if there's a couple bass, walleyes, pike, muskie, whatever wants to come along and bite our lures. Let's go. What you using over there, babe? What's that? Kitech. Kitech? Yeah. The key tech? What color? Red, speckled. I think that's called male perch or something. The color. It's a discontinued color. I caught my smallmouth today on the green pumpkin tube and a green pumpkin chartreuse kitek. But I did lose a fish on that chartreuse color you're using, so let's see what we can do. I'm gonna try right over here. So all I'm doing is I'm using a tube jig and I'm just slowly twitching it on the bottom and pausing it, trying to make it look like a crayfish or some sort of creature crawling across the bottom. Smallmouth bass love crayfish. 
identify their favorite meal. They like to eat minnows, they like to eat panfish, worms, leeches, but they love crayfish. That's why the tube jig and anything that looks like a tube or looks like a crayfish is so effective for smallmouth bass. Especially in rivers because there's a lot of crayfish activity in rivers. I'm gonna try the green pumpkin tube again. That guy right here. That's what caught me my biggest smallmouth today. Let's see if we can get another one. Hopefully we get a keeper walleye today. It'd be nice to get some walleye for dinner. so cute. Eyes bigger than his mouth. Look at this, folks. <laughs> this little guy. Ah! Look how tiny. Look at his mouth. Look at that. God! He swallowed it. There we go. We'll toss him back. Let's get a bigger one. <laughs> Even that little one fights. Those smallmouth are so strong. Even the babies fight hard. Imagine what five pounders, six pounders, seven pounders are fight like, you know. So we just arrived at the river. My wife and I are gonna put our waders on. These are uh, Gander Mountain waders. Gander Mountain is no longer open. Now they're called Gander World, I believe. Heard they're a totally different store. I don't know, I haven't been there yet. But uh, yeah, these are old Gander Mountain waders. 600 gram neoprene waders. Absolutely warm. When uh, you're dealing with cold weather today, this is 42 degrees out. It's not that cold, but the water temperature is going to be much colder, so you're going to need a warm pair of waders on a day like today. Let's get out there and catch some fish. Today, I'm using a Shimano Polaris medium light action rod with a Fluger Tryon reel, 10 pound test power pro, 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader. Right now I'm trying a green pumpkin tube jig that I have the hook pushed up inside of so that it's more weedless and snagless. It's not 100% snagless, but uh definitely works better than an exposed hook. Let's see if we can catch a smallmouth bass. When you uh, rig that hook up inside the tube like that, when you put it inside the tube weedless, when you get a bite, set the hook real hard because you got to push that hook through the plastic up into the fish's lips. Hopefully I'll be able to show you guys how it's done. I got my wife out here behind me. I'm not sure if you can see her, but she's dragging minnows around on a split shot sinker and a hook. We've had a couple bites, about six bites today on minnows, but we missed them. It's still early yet, so hopefully something turns on.
pounder. This one's definitely been caught before. You can see right here, you can kind of see a rip old wound on his lip. But that's the power of catch and release right there. I'm going to get some pictures and get this guy back in the water. Well, I just caught this three pound smallmouth. It's about 17 and a half inches long. He wouldn't stop flopping around when I tried measuring him, but 17 and a half, 18. Here we go. He's been caught before. He's got that wound on his lip right there. Someone else caught him and released him, and now I'm gonna release him so someone else can enjoy him. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> So what I was doing today, when I just caught that smallmouth, I threw my jig, my tube jig, up over here into that current, and it swung over here into this slacker water, and I drained it back, and he hit about midway through my retrieve right here. Let's see if we can get another one. is only 40 degrees right now and the wind is really really chilly so the water temperature is not warm at all today in fact the water temperature might not even be over 40 degrees pretty cold which is strange that I've gotten probably about four bites on a tube jig we've gotten about eight bites on a minnow my wife lost a nice size walleye but it's strange that you can get smallmouth bass to bite in this cold weather, but you're not able to get anything else to bite. But hey, I love smallmouth bass and I'll take it. I'm still throwing the green pumpkin tube. I might switch back to a minnow soon if I don't get something going here again. But I have gotten a lot of light, really light bites and carry-offs where they pick it up in their mouth and they just sort of carry the line off. It's just, they're not grabbing it enough where I can get the hook you know, that good hook set on them. My wife got the tail bit off her minnow. She's about to show you that right now. Show her that. Show them that. See? <laughs> no more tail. <laughs> but that's how light the fish are actually biting today. They're barely grabbing the bait. this one right here nice little two pounder pound and a half there we go there you go babe good job 
up. So my wife just released about a two pound smallmouth. It was a fat little bugger. Now we're gonna try to get another fish. I switched back to a fathead minnow on a chartreuse green number four hook. I'm gonna see if uh, something chews on that. Well, I guess I caught a baseball. <laughs> Pretty odd catch. One year a while ago over on when we first met, I caught an Easter basket. On Easter. Yeah, on Easter, of all things. Actually, I think I caught two. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I caught two. So, yeah, that's my luck. I a baseball. But now I caught a baseball. So. See if Babe Ruth has a signature on it. It's pretty uh, grody. I don't know. So I just switched back from a tube jig because I wasn't getting any bites. Switched back to a fathead minnow on a slip sinker rig. Instead of using the split shot rig I was using before, I, slipped, I switched over to a slip sinker rig because when you use a slip sinker rig, the fish can't feel the sinker. The line just flows through the sinker. I think before, you can see the egg sinker sliding up and down my line. It gets stopped by that swivel right there. We got about 20 inches of line to a fathead minnow on a number four hook. But before, I kept getting bites and the fish were dropping the bait. Maybe with, if they can't feel the tension of the sinker, maybe they'll hold on for it. So let's see if this works. So if you guys ever come out to these rivers in Wisconsin and you want to know what kind of rod to use, pick yourself up a six foot to a seven and a half foot medium light action spinning rod. Medium light is by far the most versatile action in a rod, in my opinion, for this river fishing because it helps you jig, it helps you work live bait rigs, and it helps you throw lures that are small to medium size with ease. If you use anything that's heavier than that, it can be sometimes overkill because you don't know if you're going to run into white bass, walleyes, smallmouth, pike, you just don't know. But medium light action, which is a light tip with some backbone, so you can see how the rod starts to load up about midway, but the tip and I love using that for this type of fishing because you can feel the bites, you can watch your rod tips sometimes moving. It's just a good all around rod to be using out on the rivers here in Wisconsin. So if you're going to pick up one rod, I'd say go with a six and a half to seven foot medium light. This is a six foot two. Sometimes I wish it was a little longer, but it's not a bad rod at all. In fact, it's my favorite jigging stick out of my entire collection. My favorite jigging rod. So, uh, yeah, this is a six foot two Shimano Claris. This is a 17 year old one. They still make these rods today. They're just awesome rods. Shimano Compres, Shimano Clarences. You can't go wrong with those rods. Or a St. Croix Triumph, Premier, Legend. I mean, all those St. Croix products, G. Loomis, Fenwick, those are all good companies. Quantum. But make sure you get a quality graphite rod that's medium light in action. You can go up to a medium, but like I said, it, it'll be overkill sometimes if you're catching white bass or you're catching... I mean, your average smallmouth here in southern Wisconsin is going to be about a pound and a half. You don't want to really have heavy gear to fight something like that. But uh, every once in a while, you'll hook into a big pike, catfish, muskie. I've caught 47 inch muskies on this medium light inch rod, or medium light action rod. 
I caught salmon, everything. I mean, as long as you fight the fish, you play the drain, you know, make sure your drain's not too tight, it seems to work really well. Let's get back to fishing.